Okay, we are going to move on into part three of our notes today. And part three is pretty short. It's on facilitated diffusion. So it's the last type of passive transport. Facilitated diffusion is the process used to move molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration when they are too big to diffuse through the cell membrane. Facilitated diffusion is going to move those large polar molecules. So regular diffusion moves nonpolar molecules that are small. Facilitated diffusion is going to move the big ones. Since the solutes cannot diffuse through the cell membrane, a carrier protein or a channel protein is used. Now, channel proteins are proteins in a cell membrane that serve as a tunnel to transport solutes across the cell membrane. Channel proteins are also known as ion channels. An ion channel is going to transport something that is charged, like sodium or potassium, calcium or chlorine. And looking at the chemical structure there, you can see Na+, plus, K+, plus, Cl-, minus. that is telling you that there is a charge on those ions. So it looks kind of similar to an aquaporin that we had in osmosis, except it's not going to move water. Instead, it's going to move some type of a solute pro um, product here. So here's outside of the cell, here's the inside of the cell, and that cell membrane is saying, no, you cannot come in here. So the channel protein is embedded into the cell membrane, and that way these little phospholipids won't feel those charged particles moving through them. The carrier protein is a protein in a cell membrane that assists solutes through the membrane, very similar to a channel. They do this by allowing the solute to bind to the protein on one side and the protein then changes its shape and lastly the protein deposits the solutes on the other side of the cell membrane. So the difference is it's not always open, it closes. So it opens up, allows a particle in, and then it closes kind of like a teeter-totter and allows it inside. Now likewise it can also take things inside of the cell, suck them back in, and spit them back out. Facilitated diffusion is often used by your cells in the transport of glucose, which is sugar. Your cells need glucose in order to continue functioning. It's that carbohydrate, so short-term energy. Glucose is way too big to fit directly through the phospholipids. So when glucose levels in the cell are low, the cell is going to use proteins in the cell membrane to transport the glucose into the cell. So this is what it looks like when we're moving glucose through. The glucose molecule is going to fit into this channel protein. The channel protein will kind of bind around it. It'll ever so slightly change shape to conform to that glucose molecule. That's what a conformational change is. It's a shape change, and it's opening up down here, allowing that glucose into the cell. I'm going to show you a quick little recap video of the stuff we've been going over for the past couple of days. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to be inside a cell? Imagine the genetic material, the cytoplasm, the ribosomes. You'll find those in almost all cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Eukaryote cells, in addition, have membrane-bound organelles. All of those structures and organelles have different functions. But cells are not isolated little worlds. They do have a lot going on inside them, but they also need to interact with their environment. It makes sense that to keep a stable environment inside themselves, otherwise known as keeping homeostasis, they must have some control on what goes in and what goes out of them. A very important structure for this that all cells contain is the cell membrane. By controlling what goes in and out, the cell membrane helps regulate homeostasis. It's the homeostasis king. Let's take a look at the cell membrane. You could have a whole course on the cell membrane itself. It has amazing structure. It has signaling abilities. But to stick to the very basics, it's made of a phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer means two layers, so you have these two layers of lipids. Now, these lipids, they're called phospholipids, well, they have a head that is polar, and they have a tail that is nonpolar, making them quite unique. Some molecules, they have no problem 
going through the cell membrane, and they directly go through the phospholipid bilayer. Very small, nonpolar molecules, they fit in this category. They're a great example. Like some gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide gas, those are great examples. This is known as simple diffusion. Also, it doesn't take any energy to force those molecules in or out, so it's known as passive transport. Simple diffusion moves with the flow, meaning it moves with the concentration gradient. Molecules move from high concentration to low concentration. So when you hear someone saying that something's going with the concentration gradient, that's what they mean. They mean it's going from a high concentration of molecules to a low concentration of molecules. Now, remember how we said the cell membrane is actually a pretty complex structure? Well, one thing we haven't mentioned yet are proteins in the membrane. And some of them are transport proteins. Some transport proteins act as channels. Some of these proteins actually change their shape to get things across. Some of them open and closed based on some kind of stimulus. All of these are good things because it's helping with molecules that may be too big to cross the membrane on their own, or molecules that are polar and therefore need the help of a transport protein. This is known as facilitated diffusion. It's still diffusion, and it still moves with the concentration gradient of high to low. It doesn't require energy, though, so it's also a type of passive transport. It's just the proteins are facilitating or helping things pass. Charged ions often require a protein channel in order to pass through. Glucose needs the help of a transport protein to pass through. In osmosis, for water to travel at a fast rate across the membrane, it passes through protein channels called aquaporins. So these are all examples of facilitated diffusion, which is a type of passive transport and moves with the concentration gradient of high to low concentration. Now all the transport we've mentioned has been passive in nature. That means it's going from high concentration to low concentration. But what if you wanna go the other way? For example, the cells lining your gut, they need to take in glucose, but what if the concentration of glucose in the cell is higher than the amount of glucose concentration in the environment. We would still need to get the glucose in, so it's going to have to be forced against the regular gradient flow. I'm going to stop the video right there because it's going to start talking about active transport, and we haven't talked about active transport just yet. So once we talk about active transport next week, when we get back from Thanksgiving break, I'll play the rest of that video for you guys. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day.